In the first video in Infrastructure Modeler we built the terrain, added in some of the orthophotography and we actually created the road centerline data and attributed road information to it and then added in some domestic uh, building heights. Uh, what we're going to do now is populate this a little bit further and we're going to add in some uh, commercial buildings. So I'm simply going to go to my data sources in here I'm going to quit out my properties. I'm going to go into my shape files and I'm going to load up some commercial buildings. So we could look um, when we're bringing our commercial buildings in, we could actually say, well, let's give it a category or a typical type of facade as it comes in. So I'm going to double click again, same as before, change geo location. Um, we're going to give it, specify it as buildings. We're going to give it a roof height of about 20 meters. Again, if we had a lookup table actually in the shape file um, to attribute height, we don't in this case. But the difference this time in the actual table as it comes in, I'm going to add a style rule to it. So I'm going to click on my expression editor in here on my style chooser, and I can choose a type of style for the building to come in against. Again, I can type of choose a type of roof material in here. I can say, look, let's go to roofing, and we could put this as just shingles. So I'm going to close and refresh. Let the data source come in and then hit refresh. So you'll see any of my commercial buildings now have actually been populated with a, an actual style. And again, um, if you have this information in the shape file, it's great because it'll automatically come across. So I'm going to populate this a little bit further and uh, build the model uh, more up. Okay, so I've taken about five minutes and I've populated some of my buildings. You can see there's various styles. Uh, that have actually come in here but again you can actually get any individual building and you can edit and change the information related to it if you don't have the information automatically in the shape file. Um, the nice thing about this is as well you can save any information as a bookmark so not only can you grab the information related to a building you on your home tab you can actually go add book, bookmark so in here I'm going to say football area and that's it saved and again we can simply navigate through our um, bookmarks in here got one of the proposed runway so there's various information that we can actually look at and interrogate and you know I'm going to focus on this runway in here because there, there's information that we can actually add in visually to have a visual impact on the actual model itself and one of the things I'm going to add in is um, either a point of interest or a, um, a bit of furniture so um, I'm going to have a look and browse in my library uh, we'll take it back into the parent and we'll look at planes and chips. So we've got a, a jet that I want to actually add into the runway. So I'm going to simply select it, hit OK, give it a position for the jet and hit enter and let it come in. So we get various control tools in here that we can actually use and you're probably very, very similar if you use AutoCAD in here or Max or anything like that. But it's very easy to control this information and can change the plane. So we can select it and actually use the likes of our orbit. So we can change the position of it, the angle of the plane. And I can say this plane's coming in the land here, so I can actually change its orientation and put it up in the air like so. Um, the great thing about um, Infrastructure Modeler is as well, we can have a visual impact on the surrounding sky and shadows. So let's have a look at that. So um, back right in our skies, we can go into default skies and say, look, it's at night time. So again, you can see the change in the appearance in the back um, of the actual model itself. Again, you'll see the moon, etc. in there. So let's take it back into the default sky again. Uh, we'll take it back into default. And I'm going to have an impact on the actual shadow. And again, this is very good from a planning perspective. We're looking at shadow of buildings, etc. in here. So under Analyze, we can have cast shadows. Um, and obviously, it knows its geographic location. And you can actually see the plane. So if we change the time of year, the plane and the shadow will actually adjust in here. Um, Accordingly, again, we can save this information, keep the shadow in there, and um, because that could play an important part of part of the planning process. So I'm going to focus this in area in here because we've got a school proposal that we want to have a look at. So I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to have a look at my bookmarks. I'm going to have a look at my pro school. So we've got a particular school area in here that we're interested in, um, and it's going to replace an existing design. So. The existing building in here we can delete or remove the information out so we can remove any existing information and I might have a concern whether it actually falls in with the same planning restrictions according to the airport because there could be height restrictions in here so again we could add the information as part of the shape file and actually bring it in so again let's add the shape information in 
um, I've got my height restrictions so we can actually bring this in so we can double click and actually change the data source again so we'll say look at our height restriction again our geolocation is going to be the Osney grid um, this time we can actually change the information and the appearance of it if we want very easily so as it's coming in we can actually say well this is a coverage area so we've got our geolocation set up and in the table we're just going to add, manually apply a style to this so we can just simply say it's a color look it's going to have a red color in here um, as part of this when we actually bring it in so if we hit close and refresh it will actually bring the data source in, in the background so again we'll see this has actually come in here so you can see that our school actually falls within the planning area so again this has come from a bit of software and um, that's actually looked at the transmitter height and it said well the areas within red don't fall within the planning um, current planning area so you can see our new school in here will actually fit well within it and again we can change this information in the background we can add in a uh, theme mapping or we can just simply say manage the surface layers and actually take this information off um, so our height restriction in there we can say look we don't need to see it in the meantime so we can just simply take that information off and hit apply and it'll disappear in the background so now we can actually focus on the actual school so I want to actually bring in a physical model from Revit so this could be something that the architect's physically working on and we might want to bring in so this is the Revit model in the background I've got Revit open in the background so how do we typically get this information model in well what we would do we would simply export this as FBX this would be a standard format that likes a Max and infrastructure model can actually take in so we can simply export this information out export the view and send, save it out as an FBX file so I'm just going to say it's a physical 3D view I'm going to save it out in my desktop and hit OK and let it run back in infrastructure modeler what I need to do is create this as a new building um, in my palette so my style palette um, we can have a look at our building information in here so let's just pop this back out to 3D model so we'll have a look at buildings um, we'll have a look at residential in here so we've got various residential ones so I'm going to simply hit add and I'm going to pick up my model uh, FBX file so it's on my desktop so let's have a look at that you'll see the various model files it'll actually take in so let's just look for my FBX file in here um, there it is there in my primary school and again we've got various uh, options on um, how we actually insert it in here but I'm going to keep it as is I'm going to simply hit OK what actually happens now is that's going to be available um, when we actually try and create a building so I'm going to zoom in here say this existing building or it's been demolished and we're going to add in um, our create buildings first of all I need to pick it out from the flyout so there's our new 3D model and then I'm simply ready to add it in the extents of the boundary I can in it, enter to bring it in and similar to the plane we can actually pick the model up and we can actually use our various rotation tools in here etc to change the position of it so let's just actually do that so I'm going to rotate it round and I'm going to leave it like so so I've got my building in and against the background in there so again you can see it's cutting in against the um, background of the actual tree and that's okay that could be very easily a change so now I've got a bit of concern about the roadway I want, might want to bring my road down here from a planning perspective so how would we add a new road in here let's just pan on down and let's go to our road design so we'll go to create roads and we'll click on this existing point and we'll bring the road up to tie in to the existing road and we'll simply hit enter the junction in here might just now want to nip back in the background so again I can pick it up and just actually nip that back to tie in so you can see it's actually bringing in the road information with the bollard so I'm taking unique information that's come from a Revit model saved out as an FBX file that will actually translate into lights of infrastructure modeler so we've got various trees in here that I had from earlier on so how would you get this tree information in again what we can actually do is create um, tree areas or coverage areas in here so we could have a look at our trees we could pick out the area that we actually want to put in so we all want to protect the tree or protect the, the school actually soften the area down put, plant some trees and we can hit enter again we can change the height of the various vegetation in here and just see how that will have an impact on the model and put that information in other aspects we could look at we could have a concern approaching the school that we might need to add some crash barriers in so again we can look at some city furniture in here 
we can actually use it in the pull down. And I've got the various um, a straight reel, so I might want to put a straight reel at this point and hit enter and bring the actual reeling in. So again, we can copy that information along. We can actually change uh, data uh, related to it uh, on the screen, so we can actually copy and paste and bring various guard reels in. Let's just pop that in position. So we have a wealth of different information in the libraries that we can physically add in. If we wanted to actually bring in the likes of cars in here, again, we can actually use our library components, city furniture. <coughs> we can expand this, we can have a look at our styles from parent libraries. So let's go back into the uh, likes of highway or traffic. Uh, we can pick up various car or um, lorries or ambulances, etc. from the library. Again, we can actually bring this in as part of the model. So we're actually communicating design intent to uh, the various planning uh, organizations in here. Okay, you've seen very quickly how we can actually populate a video or a uh, infrastructure modeler based on these uh, two videos. Next time we'll have a look at some storyboard on how we can actually communicate the design intent uh, uh, over the cloud with using the likes of our iPads. Thanks for listening.